Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Multivariable Expressions. This is part one. So multivariable expression, it means we have an expression, which is just a calculation in algebra, where we have uh, more than one variable. So in the previous lessons, we had X or Y or A or B, but you can have expressions with more than one variable. It's perfectly fine to have. So just as an example, let's take a very simple multivariable expression. X plus Y minus three, this is the expression, x plus y minus three. And I'm gonna tell you, uh, I'm gonna give you that the value in this particular case of x is negative one, and I'm gonna tell you that y in this case is two. So here is our first example of an expression with more than one variable. Now this kind of thing happens in real life all the time. In many cases, your equations um, or your expressions will have more than one uh, variable in it. Just think about something simple like throwing a baseball. You, later on you'll learn when you throw a baseball you can write equations that tell you the shape of the path that that ball will take through the air, right? But the variables in the equation, there's many of them. You may have t for time, that's the time of flight of the ball. You may have uh, another variable that measures the angle that you throw the ball. And then you may have other variables, V for velocity, I could go on and on, G for gravity. So this idea of having more than one letter running around is something so incredibly common that more times than not, you will actually see more than one variable there. So this is extremely common. Now what do you do when you see the situation uh, happen here? Well, you just take x and you put it in the x position and you take y and you put it in the y position. It's very simple. So you put the negative one for x and then y we're saying is equal to two. And now we have a simple expression to evaluate. Now the letters are gone, we've substituted in and we, now we have numbers. We only have addition and subtraction so we just go left to right from order of operations. So negative one plus two, we have opposite signs and so they're uh, added together opposite signs. So you subtract two minus one is one and the sign goes with the bigger absolute value, which in this case is positive. And then you still have to do that minus three. So all we did was we going left to right, we did this addition first, we got positive one. And the minus three is just written down again because we still need to do that. Now what is one minus three? Or you can think of it as one plus a negative three if you want to. And that's gonna be an answer of negative two, right? So one plus a negative three, you would just subtract them. Another way to think about it is, if you see a subtraction happening, and the first number is too small, and you can't do it, then just subtract it anyway, three minus one, but you have to stick a negative number on it. That's the way it's always gonna happen. You're taught when you're young that to subtract, you have to have a bigger number to start with, right? Five minus two, or six minus one. You have to have a bigger number to start with, but in algebra, you can do the subtraction fine, even if the first number is smaller, you just subtract as usual, three minus one is two, but when it's backwards like this, you just must put a negative sign on the front. And we've gone through all of that in previous lessons. All right, so the answer there is negative two. All right, let's take a look at the expression two times a plus b. And I'm going to give you that a is three and b is five. So I have two different variables, a and b. I just stick them in here. Two times a, a is three, b is five. And now I evaluate this. I have multiplication and addition. I multiply first. Two times three is six. Still have to add that five. Six plus five, that's 11. That's the final answer. All right. Move right along. What if we have three times x minus y? And I'm going to give you or tell you ahead of time because I know the answers here, let's say, that x is negative three and y is negative six. So what do I do? I stick those values in the proper locations. Here, x we're saying is negative three, so I write negative three minus, minus sign comes from here, but y is also a negative number. So yes, it's gonna look like this, minus a negative, but really it's better to wrap that in parentheses to make sure that you don't confuse yourself because if you don't put the parentheses around the six, the negative six, then you have a minus minus right next to each other and it looks like one subtraction symbol. Really it's two minuses next to each other so it's cleaner to put the parentheses here. Inside the parentheses, we have to do that first, we have minus minus, we have to turn that into a plus. And then we have on the inside here, we have opposite sign. So we subtract three minus, uh, I'm sorry, six minus three is uh, three and the sign goes with the bigger absolute value which is positive. So this works out to be positive three and then three times three is positive nine and positive nine is the final answer. All right, 
Let's get a little more practice here. You see these don't take too long to do. What about uh, 2 uh, a plus b plus 9. 2 a plus b parentheses and then plus 9 and I'm going to give you that a is negative 7 and that b is equal to positive 3. So we'll stick the value of a in here, 2, and then again, a is negative 7, but if you just write it right next to each other, it looks like it's subtracted, so you need to put a parentheses around it so you can show yourself that these are multiplied together. Plus b, but b is 3, plus 9 on the outside. Now on the inside, we have this multiplication happening. That has to happen first. 2 times 7 is 14, but it's a negative times positive, so it's negative 14. And then we're adding that 3 to it, and then adding that 9 on the out outside. So we have to do the parentheses first. We have a negative 14 plus a positive. So we have opposite signs we subtract. What is 14 minus 3? It's 11. And the sign goes with the bigger absolute value, which is negative. So this whole thing works out to negative 11 plus 9. And then again, we have opposite signs that we're adding together. So we just subtract the numbers. 11 minus 9 is just 2, and the sign goes with the bigger absolute value which is negative. And so the answer we get there is negative two. Again, if I'm ever adding or subtracting these numbers and you're like, how did he do that? And then it just means that you need to practice those skills. Go back to the lessons on adding integers and subtracting. All right, next problem. What about x times y divided by three plus two? Again, when we have x sitting right next to a parentheses with no multiplication symbol, they, it still means they're multiplied together. There's an implied multiplication. Now I'm going to give you that x is negative 1, and I'm also going to give you that y is negative 9. And we stick those two variable values into here. x is negative 1, right? And on the inside, y is negative 9. Now, if you wanted to, I could put parentheses around the negative 1. I could also put parentheses around the negative 9. But in this case, it doesn't help with readability too much. Usually, you want to wrap it in parentheses when if, the, if you didn't do that, then it would look like something else. If you didn't put the parentheses, it would look like 2 minus 7. But here, this is clear that this is negative 9 divided by 3 plus 2, and then this is also clear as well. So I don't feel the need to do that. Now on the inside uh, of the parentheses, we have division and addition. We must divide first. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Negative divided by positive is negative. So that's negative 3. Then we add that 2. On the inside, now we have to add we're adding opposite signs, so that means we subtract. 3 minus 2 is 1, and the sign of this goes with the bigger absolute value, which is negative. So the actual answer to that is negative 1. Now we have negative divided, I'm sorry, negative times negative, which is positive. 1 times 1 is 1, so it's actually a positive 1. All of that work to give you just the answer of positive 1. All right, good deal. Let's take a look at 5 times 2 times a minus 3 times b. And I'm going to give you that a is 8, and I'm also going to give you that b is 5. So I put a is 8 in here. Uh, 2, I can just put a dot times 8 if I want to, I could, or I could put parentheses around the 8, either way would be fine. Minus 3 times b, b is 5. So again, I'm putting dots here because that's clear to me, but I, I could, instead of doing that, I could just erase the dot and I could put parentheses around the 8 parentheses around the 5. But you notice how there's so many parentheses here that that also kind of looks ugly. But So there's really no right answer. I'm just showing you different ways of doing it. In any case, on the inside of this parentheses, you have multiplication happening, which is 2 times 8, positive 2 times positive 8, which is 16. And then we can also do this multiplication. 3 times 5 is 15. I just have to, in the inside, make sure and do all the multiplications first, and then I will do the subtraction. 16 minus 15 is 1, and then 5 times 1 is all that's left, and 5 times 1 is 5, and that is the final answer. All right. Let's take a look at 2x plus 1. Uh, close this parentheses, and need another one on the outside, and then minus 5, and then we're going to close that one, and we'll divide by y, and I'm going to give you that x is negative 10, and I'm also going to give you that y is positive 2. So we need to put both of those in their location. So here we have 2 times negative 10. So it's going to be 2 times negative 10. Wrap it in parentheses so you know it's multiplied. I know it's a lot of parentheses, but sometimes you just have to do it. To close that one, the minus 5 gets written down. Divided by y, y is 2. I don't need to put parentheses around that. I can if I want, but I don't have to. Now, one step at a time. We have a parentheses here, 
But on the inside of this, we have another inner parentheses. And inside of this, we have multiplication. 2 times negative 10 is going to be negative 20 because it's positive times negative. So we have negative 20. The plus 1 will happen later. All right. Now on the inside, we have addition. But the signs are different. So what we really do is subtract. 20 minus 1 is 19. And the sign of this goes with the bigger absolute value, which is negative. So it's negative 19. Right? So we've done this. Now we can drop. Let me see here. I think I missed a set of parentheses here. So we have 2 here. And then this one goes with this one. And the 2 there. And once we've multiplied these, that happens here. And I think I'm missing one right here like that. So what we have here is we've calculated this to be negative 19, and now we're going to have the minus 5 from here. So this set of parentheses is this one right here. We've calculated this, and that gives us the negative 19. The minus 5 must then be done later. Now we have to divide by 2. So we have a negative minus another negative. So we get a larger negative number, and we add the numbers. So that's going to give you 19 plus 5, that's 24. So negative minus 5 is like negative plus another negative, so negative 24. And then we divide by positive 2. So positive, I'm sorry, negative divided by positive is negative 24 divided by 2 is 12. And so the answer to that is negative 12. That's the final answer. A lot of opportunities for errors with the signs. That's why we do all the lessons dealing with multiplying and dividing and adding, subtracting first. All right, let's take a look at 4 times a minus b plus 6, we'll close that off like this, and I will tell you that a is 3 and that b is 7. All right, so let's put a 3 in here. This is just a 3, and on the inside here, b is 7. Close it off like this. So we have an outer parentheses. We must do what's inside, but inside we have an inner parentheses, so that's what we actually do first. 7 plus 6 is going to be 13. We can remove the parentheses and just put 13 here. Now we must do the subtraction. What is 3 minus 13? Again, you're doing a subtraction you can't really do because the smallest number is, 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 uh, is in the front there. So what you really do is subtract anyway. 13 minus 3 is just 10. And you put a negative there. That's what happens when you subtract with the smaller number first. You perform the subtraction as if it were reversed. And then you just put the sign there because this is the same as 3 plus a negative 13. Remember, when you have two numbers that are added and they're opposite signs, you really subtract them. And then the sign goes with the larger absolute value. So if you consider it 3 plus a negative 13, then the larger absolute value is negative 13, which is negative, And you subtract the numbers anyway. And now you have 4 times 10 is 40. And positive plus negative is negative. And so the final answer to this whole thing is negative 40. All right, only two more problems. Let's take a look at 30. We'll divide that by, here we have 2 times a plus 5 times b. And I'm going to tell you that a is 12 and b is negative 6. So we're going to put those in the proper locations here. Here we have 30 divided by. This is 2 times a, so I'm going to put 2 times 12. Uh, here, and then plus 5 times b. b is negative 6. So I'll put a negative 6 right here, and I'll close the outer parentheses. So on the inside of here, I have to do what's inside. Now I have multiplication and multiplication, and I can do them separately in separate steps, but I'm also allowed to do both multiplications at the same time, as long as I add the results later, right? So 2 times 12, positive times positive is 24. And then 5 times negative 6, is negative 30 because positive times negative there. So again, a lot of students get bent out of shape why I'm doing them at the same time. But really what's happening is on the inside, I have to do all multiplications first. So I could do this one and rewrite the whole thing and then do this one. But I'm going to end up in the same position. I can do all the multiplications first and then add them at the end. That's totally fine to do. You only kind of get this kind of thing by practice. So on the inside, I have 24 plus a negative 30. They're opposite signs, so I subtract. 30 minus 24 is 6, and this is the larger absolute value, so it's really negative 6. Uh, positive divided by negative is negative, and 30 divided by 6 is 5. And so the answer to this whole thing is negative 5. All right, here's our final problem. Here we have 15 plus x minus 3 multiplied by y plus 1, and I'm going to tell you that x is 15 
and y is negative 1. So let's put those in the proper locations. Here we have 15 plus x, we said is 15, minus 3, and y is negative 1. Now don't worry so much, you have parentheses and another parentheses next to each other. This just means they're multiplied together. So we have to do what's inside the parentheses first. What is inside of this parentheses? 15 minus 3 uh, is going to be what? 12, right? Positive 12. And then inside of this one, what is negative 1 plus a positive 1? They kind of kill each other, and the answer is 0. The negative 1 plus positive 1 is going to give you 0. So again, I can do them in parallel because I'm doing what's inside of both sets of parentheses at the same time, just whatever is next. Uh, in terms of what is inside of there, I do what the only, in this case, the only thing in here is a subtraction and an addition, so I do them in parallel. Now I must do this multiplication before addition. What is 12 times 0? It's just 0. And so the answer you get actually to this whole thing is just 15. All right. So this was multivariable expressions. It was part one, right? It's very common in math to have more than one variable. In fact, like I said in the beginning, most things in real life, most things you study always have more than one, more than one variable. So it's very common and that we have to kind of get used to seeing that. So this lesson is mostly just getting you used to seeing different letters running around. And we're just taking the values which I'm giving you and I'm telling you to put them in there and then we calculate and see what the answer is. But don't forget where we're going. Where we're going is we're going to write an equation where I have letters running around but I don't know their values. And we have to then solve and figure out what the value of the variable is. Here, it's like I give you this and I tell you what the value of the variable is, but in the future, we're going to find the value of the unknown variable. That's what we're really trying to do. In real life, we're trying to calculate unknown stuff. That's what we're trying to do. So we're just getting practice here. Solve these yourself. Get that practice. Follow me on the part two. We're going to do more multivariable expressions where the expressions are just a touch more complex. So follow me on and we'll get more practice in the next lesson.